off. And it just... I don't know. Seems like the bandwidth has straightened itself out. Uh, chat and... Um, try again. Deselect, capture chat. Select, try again. Work, work, Got it, work. got it. Okay, just lower down the volume real quick. And... Mute it on my end so it doesn't repeat. Thank fucking Christ. I think it's I think it's actually going to stay stable now. Yeah, yep, there you are. Now. I'm watching the stream right now. So that was an absolutely chaotic start to this entire fucking thing. <laughs> that was a very fucking annoying start. More like it, Jesus Christ. So, um First of all, open letter to Elgato and Discord. Fix your fucking shit. The the integration system that you have set up for Elgato and Discord to work is completely unacceptable. The way that it can fuck itself and unfuck itself for no given reason, no matter how many times you try and fail to actually restart everything, unplugging and plugging in different wires, resetting set app, uh, uh, undoing and redoing settings that you've already done a million and one different times. There is no reason for us to have to go through this much trouble and for it to still not work. You need to fix this. Stop jerking off in the fucking corner and listen to the consumer. Yeah, exactly. Like, before I let you borrow the uh, capture card, I gave up with trying to figure out the team chat because Ethan was able to figure it out no problem but whenever I would do what Ethan did it would fucking fail for me it would make my videos always lag like, and skip like crazy so I'm just like you know what fuck it I'm not even gonna bother anymore <sighs> I don't fucking understand anymore uh, but yeah, you may want to turn my uh, you may want to turn the uh, chat not chat volume but the uh, mic volume up on for the team chat because I'm Okay, um, I just changed it from 50 to 67. Is this working any better? Um, let's see. Of course, with this lag, it'll take a couple moments. Yeah, I'm monitoring the stream right now myself. It sounds a little bit better. It sounds a bit like we're at equal volume. Yeah, let's just hope, right? Yeah. Well, anyways, uh, for anyone that might actually be watching this for some reason, thank you for being patient with our little bit of uh, trouble here. It's been a bit of a fiasco trying to work with Elgato and fucking... Uh, yeah, Elgato and Discord being... Both, well, okay, I'll give Discord, yeah, I'll give Discord credit where it's due, at least for the majority of its functions, it works right. But, when it comes to integration with Elgato, it's probably mostly Elgato's fault, but it's shit. Yeah. Anywho, sir, so, now I'm actually about to play a pretty important game from my childhood, or, at the very least, an important game from the same... Yeah, from the same system and same series as my childhood. Because, well, as you can already see it on the live stream. It's the original Armored Core on PlayStation 1. So far, the only Armored Core game to be released as a classic on the entire PlayStation system. We haven't gotten anything from the PS2 era yet, and certainly nothing else for the PS1 era. Which is, honestly, a, an absolute sin. You want to know what we should do in this live stream, man? Yeah. Um, 
I'd recommend playing about maybe 15, 20 minutes of Armored Core 1 and then switching over to Verdict Day just to s see how much it actually has fucking changed. Well, going from the first game in the series to the latest. I like that idea. Yeah. So it's I'll just go ahead. Be interesting. I'll just go ahead and the uh the two saves one for Hyperion and the other for Kaneki because mm -hmm. necessary yeah so yeah oh Jesus I should probably consider uh muting the actual stream itself on my computer because I don't want the sound effects layering over each other and repeating yeah so this is uh Armored Core 1. The only Armored Core game that I have right now to date that I've actually beaten 100% of the way through. And I'm actually about to prove that to you with a couple of different save files. Oh, thankfully I just got signed out of PSN. Wonderful. I mean, at least there's a little bit less stress on the bandwidth now. Yeah. Oh, shit. You know, I just realized I completely skipped the, uh, opening thing, but you know what, we'll do that for episode 2 when I decide to really begin playing Armored Core. But, yeah. we'll, we'll consider episode 1 to be a little bit of a retrospective. Yeah. So let's go to scenario mode real quick. Damn, 1997, holy shit, man. This game's pretty much fucking 20 years old at this point. Okay, so I just screwed up. I accidentally what selected happened? new game, and oh. it would not let me back out because fucking 1997 programming skills. System engaged. So I'm just gonna have to go ahead and play through the beginning mission, and then I'll have to load up our files from there. All right. I mean, hey, at least this gives us a good look at uh, well, the starter AC. Yeah. And the fact that, yeah, and even crazy is the fact that it has still aged pretty well. I mean, controls aside. Well, considering this game was actually out before the dual shocks. This was pretty much the best they could do. The test is over. From this moment on, you are a raven. You know, I'm not gonna. I'm not. I'm not one to brag, but I'm surprised I actually did that well. I definitely did work pretty damn well. Even though the, that is literally the shittiest AC that you could possibly have, or one of the shittiest. Anyway, so let's go ahead and load up the data real quick. Load from slot 2. So, for anyone that's actually been around on my channel for any extended period of time, you should definitely know that I have a certain flagship sort of mech for this entire series. I call it Hyperion because it's pretty much a uh, an iconic name for this kind of thing. And here's what he looks like. Yeah, honestly, one thing you never did explain to me is how did you get I mean, Hyperion? You never actually explained that. Oh, right? uh, that's something that's been actually. Uh, no, no, no. It's not been lost to time. Actually, I remember exactly where I got the name from now. Um, see, for a while, I had actually originally decided to call this thing Phantom, because, well, that sounded like a pretty imposing name. But, after a while, I actually started getting really into Greek mythology, and I was like, hmm, you know, those gods are cool and all, but what about those titans? We don't hear a lot about them, and... Well, maybe there's one that's like, you know, one of goodness or light or something like that. 
Funny enough, there was a Titan of Light. Its name was Hyperion. I stuck with it. Hmm. I was like, okay, you know what, this works. Coincidentally, I would find out sometime later that that was actually the name of the evil organization from, Bo yeah, from Borderlands, which is, uh, you know, where most people were probably thinking I got that name from. But that couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, I hadn't really even known much about Borderlands by the time I made my AC and called it Hyperion. Yeah. And, and I know you never would have thought that Hyperion would have become the legend it is today. I mean, I mean, hell, on my channel there's two AMVs that I worked incredibly hard on just for Hyperion. You're working on story form. He's gone all the way up to Armor Core 5, and he's going to be in the new Armor Core game when that finally comes out. Oh, yeah. So... Never in your wildest dreams would you have thought Hyperion would have turned into what he is now, would you? Nope, not in the slightest. But, uh... I guess enough playing Armor Core, learning it, and actually somehow becoming even better at it than I thought I ever could have been. I guess it's kind of, uh made this AC such an imposing, well, maybe not necessarily by stature all the time, but definitely by power. It makes it one of the uh, more freaky armor cores. Yeah, uh, Ethan and I know that firsthand. We've fought Hyperion enough times than Armor Core birthday to know never piss the motherfucker off. Well, um, you're about to see me take on a one-on-two match, where it's me alone versus two guys. Do you want to see just how powerful Hyperion is? Sure. Apparently there's, apparently there's gonna be the lag, but it shouldn't be too substantial. Right. But I just, I'll say one thing to you. What? Um, if you didn't notice that, uh, hang on a second. If you didn't notice... Do you see that gigantic freaking gray weapon on its right hand, or just floating around its right hand because of the graphics? Yep. Let me go ahead and uh, show you what that is. Look at the name at the bottom left. Yeah. Well, once it shows up in the live stream. Yeah. Oh dear. Yeah, the WG-1 Karasawa, the legendary laser rifle, named after one of the people that developed Armor Core. Oh dear. It's, uh, simply put, one of the most powerful weapons in the game. I mean, its attack power is 1,550, for Christ's sake. Mm -hmm. By comparison, do you want to know how powerful the starter... Yeah, the starter rifle is... How powerful. Well, its attack power is only 218 per shot. Oh, dear. And one of my other favorites that I like to use, the, uh, 1,000... Yeah, the 1,000 ammo machine gun, only does 105 damage per shot. But my absolute favorite, besides the Karasawa, to use as a yeah, as a backup weapon, happens to be the uh, WG XP 2000. 435 damage for 200 shots. Definitely making it a very good uh, all-around kind of weapon. But I really wanted to see just how I could push that uh, yeah push this build to be able to hold the Karasawa and still be massively powerful. So, yeah, you are about to watch, uh, some bitches get fucking toasted by a Karasawa. <laughs> with your skill, one-on-one -on -one isn't a fair fight, so we have even things up with a bit of a handicap. Now let's start. Main system, engaging combat mode. Enemy ranking AC, identified as Fefner. Oh, 
Uh, yeah. He used his laser blade on me. I'm trying to recover a little bit of energy here. I keep forgetting just how fucking uh, sensitive the camera is for this thing. I think it's this model of my Huh? Target of Operation Cleared. System switched to normal mode. that this version of Hyperion goes through energy fairly quickly. Uh, with these powerful weapons, yeah. But you just also won't get toasted by the laser rifle. But now there's my plasma cannon. Look at that shit. Oh dear, sweet Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah. Not very kind. <laughs> no. So, yeah. There's Hyperion. At least, the power build that I usually use. Yeah. Do you want to see the, uh, more, shall we say, conservative build? Sure. Okie doke. Oh, yeah, I should probably also mention one thing that, uh, should probably scare you a little bit. So, um, you see how he was able to hold the Karasawa, right? Uh -huh. I'm gonna wait for the live stream to catch up to show that I actually put the Karasawa back on. But yeah, so, I'm gonna leave the screen here, and I want you to look at the name of this laser blade. Once it shows up. Yeah, because it's showing you putting the Karasawa back on. I accidentally flickered from between, yeah, between it. Oh no, not the moonlight. Yeah, this AC is simultaneously using the legendary Karasawa and the legendary moonlight. Not one thing could survive that. Not even a ghost stuff. In armor core terms, that is a in armor core terms, that's a one-two combo from hell. Yeah. Hyperion in this game is essentially an armor core the ultimate thing. But uh yeah, so I switched back to the uh more conservative type of weapon because it's better for standard mission operations. Uh. But whew, this is gonna get fun. Using this small weapon on him. With your skill, one-on-one -on -one isn't a fair fight. So we have evened things up with a bit of a handicap. Now let's start. Main system, engaging combat mode. Enemy ranking AC, identified as Fefna. Oh yeah, watch this shit. I'm gonna wait for this guy to land. As best as, yes, well, as well as I can. Basically, yeah. That's a special ability that's only unlocked with the human plus. Target of operation cleared. System switched to normal mode. <laughs> Plasma cannon for when you just don't give a shit anymore. Pretty much. <laughs> but I think... Yeah, I think with that kind of battle, at least against that guy, the carousel was probably the easier bet. <laughs> yeah. But... Now I'm gonna go ahead and load up a different AC. Ah, 
scratch the hair. Hello, can Now see, I swear I remember giving this guy uh, quadruped legs, but I guess I went with something that was more close to Hyperion itself. This is some very slight changes to give it a more unique profile. Um, okay, yeah, everything seems to be working still. You there? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay, just making sure. But yeah, so basically what we have here is a uh, semi-clone AC. <laughs> some parts would change to make it look different, but... Besides that, it's uh, it's still pretty much the same AC, just different parts in different colors, or some different parts. In a way, it's almost kind of like an evil version of Hyperion. What? In a way, it's if almost kind of like Dark Hyperion. Isn't a fair fight. Kind of, so except still good. With a bit of a handicap. Yeah. Now let's start. Main system engaging combat mode. Those shoulders do look really cool on this thing, though. Enemy ranking AC, identified as Fefna. Sit down, you tough. Target of operation cleared. System switched <laughs> to normal mode. Oh. It's gonna be so weird going from this game to fucking Verdict Day. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be a completely different experience entirely. Yeah. I don't know if I'm prepared for it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that's the general gist of uh, what Armored Core on the PS1 was like. Yeah. We'll be back for uh, for this game in particular sometime later. But for now. Uh, Time to briefly hook up the other PlayStation controller, the really shitty one from Performance Design Parts, the Afterglow one. It feels so fucking disgusting and cheap to hold. Like, honestly, I got it because I thought it would actually be a good equivalent to the, uh, yeah. not yet, to the PS3 controller. But. In all reality, it's really more like a cheap Chinese knockoff, and it just feels horrid. Yeah. Thankfully, I only had to use it to, uh, back out of the, uh, yeah, back out of Armored Core on the PS1, because that, uh, that's something that you can't really do with the PS, yeah, with the PS4 controller, unfortunately. That's true. And, um, black screen. Is, uh, is something not in order? Hang on a second. If the PS4 just, but yeah, if the PS4 just decided to break itself, or not really. Yeah, my PS3's done that too. At the end, at you what? At, at the end of my friggin' um, no HUD challenge on Destiny with Ethan. Yeah. At the very end of the video, my fucking PS3 froze. What? Well, isn't that some fucking BS? It is. Yeah, it appears to be that the PS3 actually froze mid-quitting process. Oh, yay. When that happens. Yeah. I'm actually kind of surprised. And I think my phone yeah. just, uh... Oh, no. Never mind. Um... It appears to be that we're still alive. 
Yeah, we are. <laughs> Alright, well, um, I guess I'm gonna have to, uh, hold the stream for a second while I stop the PS3 from being a little bitch. And hopefully, by stopping the stream, it doesn't fuck anything up, because we spent way too damn long fixing this shit up. Yeah, right. So, let, let's, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, stick, yeah, stick around. I will probably, uh, do something different with the title to, uh, you know, at least show that I had some sort of a plan B in case something like this happened, even though I did not plan for this at all. Mm -mm. Alright, so, uh, be back in a bit, everybody on YouTube.